In this week's Carrie's Corner, Rich Spotlight's baseball player, Eddie Goodell. Last week, we talked a little bit about Dick Flavin, the man who has succeeded but not replaced the late, great Clark Booth on a few local sports pages. Today, we'll take a look at the subject of one of Mr. Flavin's recent sports columns, Eddie Goodell. You don't have to be an old timer to recognize that name, but it helps. For in the bottom half of the first inning of the second game of an August 19, 1951 doubleheader versus the Detroit Tigers, the St. Louis Browns, now the Baltimore Orioles, put up a pinch hitter for the leadoff batter. That 26-year-old right-handed pinch hitter making his major league debut was three foot, seven inch, 65 pound Eddie Goodell, wearing the number one eighth on his Browns uniform, between the letters of which and Goodell's knees left little more than an inch, the smallest strike zone in baseball history. Not surprisingly, the Tiger pitcher Bob Kane, who along with a crowd of 18,000 couldn't stop laughing, walked Goodell on four high pitches. After prancing triumphantly down to first base, Eddie was immediately replaced by pinch runner Jim Delsing. When Eddie Goodell died at the age of 36 in 1961, the only baseball person at his funeral was Bob Kane, who had met Eddie only once. Sunday afternoon, August 19th, 1951, on a baseball field. A stint in the hospital prevented the Browns' flamboyant owner, Bill Vick, from attending Eddie Goodell's funeral. Thirty years later, though, when Vick was enshrined posthumously with a 1991 class in the Baseball Hall of Fame, the last line on the master promoter's plaque could refer only to one person. It reads, a champion of the little guy. Until next week, this is Rich Carey reminding you that at Carey's Corner, you always have someone in your corner.